Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to show you how to create some vectorized halftone gradients in Adobe Illustrator and some interesting uses for them. Let's head onto the computer now and get started. Okay so here we are in Illustrator and as usual you can download this exact same template file from the link in the description and follow along from home and try some of these techniques out for yourself. Now as you can see on this artboard we have the examples of this effect that we can create. Obviously we are referring to this as a halftone gradient. We're essentially vectorizing this and applying a single color to it, but we can gradiate the intensity of it. So we're still getting the, the feel of a gradient, but it's actually a vector with solid color applied to it. In most of these cases, we do have an example here where we do have a color gradient applied to this halftone gradient as well. So we can do a few different things with it. We've actually stacked two of these halftone gradients on top of each other in this example. It's quite an interesting look. We can get from it. Over on the right hand side we have the artboard that we're going to be working on and we're just going to jump straight in and show you how to create this effect. So we'll start with this hexagon down in the bottom right hand corner. To create this effect what we want to do is apply a simple gradient to our object first. So this just needs to be black and white and the reason for this is because when we go to apply the halftone effect it's automatically going to make it black and white. So there's no point in applying any color to these. We do that afterwards. So with my hexagon selected I'm going to double click on the gradient tool and we already have a gradient set up here however I'm actually going to just change this to the default black to white gradient or white to black and we'll go from here. So as you can see this is very straightforward we're not doing anything to it at the moment and from here we're going to go to effect down to pixelate and then we want to select this option that says color halftone. So this is actually a color halftone which which means this is actually going to apply four different channels of color. So each of these channels refers to CMYK values, which is the color space we normally use for print. We are actually in an RGB document, but this is the way this effect works. However, if we make sure that all of our channel values are the same, it means we're just going to get a black and white effect. Now up at the top we have max radius, so this is essentially the maximum size of the dots that are going to be generated generated from this effect. So I'll show you a more extreme example first. We'll go with 20 pixels and I'll create some random values in here just so you can see what's actually happening so you can better understand this effect. So I'm just going to click OK and you can see this is the kind of effect that you're going to get if you have random values in there. By default you may well have these have some random values so just make sure that you check this first. So I'm just going to press Command Z for the time being. We'll go back into effect go back to pixelate color halftone and now I'll make sure that all of these match. The other thing to note with this is the value we put in here is essentially the angle at which they are applied. So if I just type in 90 this essentially means it's going to be 90 degrees. So I'm going to match all of them up. I'll click OK and you can see we get a quite grid-like horizontally and vertically aligned halftone effect. Press undo again, Command Z or Control Z on a PC. We'll go back into effect, pixelate, color halftone tone and then we'll go for a slightly more off the cuff value so I'll go with 60 degrees for these so depending on the kind of look you're going for I'll also change the max radius we'll go down to 10 for this example I'll click OK and you can see this will change the look of it now the smaller the max radius you can see we're almost getting more dots and more detail potentially uh, so again like I say it depends what look you're going for the intensity you want as well now one thing to note with this effect is this is a raster effect so it means we're dealing with pixels here. If I zoom in, you can see these are just pixel based dots. So it's not vectorized right now, but to vectorize it, it's fairly simple. All we need to do is select it. I'm gonna to go to object, expand appearance, and then we're going to use our image trace panel. So if you've seen some of our other videos, we've done this with a few other effects and it can be a great way to vectorize graphics if they, are, if they aren't already vectorized. So there's a few values to note. If I just click preview, you can see it, it's trying to vectorize it. It's not doing a very good job though. And do be aware with this technique, we're not going to be able to get perfect circles with the image trace. There's always going to be slight issues
issues with it and you're going to get a slightly more rough effect from it. If I zoom into any of these you can see they're not perfect circles, it's just not possible to get this perfect because we're dealing with pixels when we apply the effect. It's still quite a nice effect we get and I quite like that it's a little bit imperfect um, but just be aware if you're trying to get perfect circles from the halftone effect in a vector format it's just not going to work using the image trace anyway. So I'm going to select this again, we'll go back into our image trace options and we found that the following values work best for getting as close as we can to perfect circles. Now this can vary and you can play around with this yourself but we essentially want to boost the threshold up as high as we can. Now obviously if I take this up to the maximum value we just get a black square so essentially the higher the value the more information it's trying to bring into the image but we found going for 250 is a good amount and then what I also want to do is maximize our paths. I'm actually going to uncheck preview so it doesn't continually try to render this but I'm going to maximize our paths value and then take our corners and noise right down to the minimum values. So if I click preview again it's doing you can see a much better job. This is still not perfect you can see we've still got some slightly odd shapes going on but for this effect I think this will do just fine. Now the other thing you want to make sure you check is the ignore white option and that just means we're only going to be left with the black areas when we go to expand this and create the vector out of it. So the next thing I can do is just in my properties panel click expand. Now if you don't have your image trace panel set up on the right hand side you can access this from the window menu and it's down here you can see it says image trace and that will open up the panel. If you don't have a properties panel to expand it you can also go to object image trace and you will have the expand option within here as well. So now you can see we have our vector halftone gradient so it's very simple to create these and like I say if you just stick to these values it does tend to work pretty well. I can now go and apply a colour. However one thing to be aware of and I'm not entirely sure why it does this it's something to do with the effect I believe but if I go to select a colour by double clicking our fill I'll select a bright red here and click OK you can see it's staying grey so it's essentially being converted into a grayscale object even though we are in an RGB colour mode any colour you pick it will change to grey. The easiest way I've found to get around this is actually just go into my colour swatches here and just pick a colour from in here and that will turn it back into a full colour RGB object and I can then go into my fill panel here and select something different and it's that simple. Now you can also do things like stack these so I'll make a copy so command C command F and then I'll flip this and we could apply a different colour to this now and really you can play around with this a bit more but it's sometimes an interesting way to apply them so you can actually have a change in colour without actually having to apply a colour gradient to it. So moving on we'll just show you a few more applications. We have some simple outlined text here, nothing special about it and I'm going to apply a halftone gradient to this. However the best way to do that instead of just applying a gradient to this text and changing it from there, what I'm actually going to do is is drag out a rectangle and then we will apply the rectangle as a clipping mask to the text. So I'm just going to drag out a rectangle above this, make sure it's wider than the text and taller as well. Grab our gradient again, select it. Now another thing to note when we applied the halftone gradient effect to our polygon we were going from black to white so we didn't change anything about the gradient. Obviously it's best if it is black and white. However if I actually change our black to a lighter colour we're going to to take down the intensity of the gradient and it's not going to be quite so clustered and intense on the black side of the gradient. So I'll show you what I mean. We'll select a lighter grey here and we'll show you the difference in the effect. So we'll go something like that. I'm also going to change the angle slightly. We'll go 30 degrees and I think that's looking good. I'm going to select this now. Again we'll go up to effect and you can see up at the top of our effect menu now we just have apply colour halftone. So that's just going to apply the same settings that we'd applied to our polygon the last time we did it. So I'm actually just going to click this and we're still getting quite a nice effect here. This may be a little bit too light on the bottom corner but we'll try it and see how we get on. So again I'm going to go up to object, expand and then we can start using our image trace. Sometimes you have to click off the object and then back on it to enable all of our options. I'm just going to match the same values so 250 for the threshold, drag our paths to the maximum value, corners down 
down to the bottom, noise down to the bottom, ignore white, and I'm just going to go ahead and click trace and then expand into my properties panel. So it's an easy routine once you get used to it. You can just run through this very quickly to create these vectorized gradients. Now I'm just going to drag this over my text here and we'll give this a color. So again, going up to my swatches panel to apply a clipping mask the way I want to, I'm going to have to select my text and I'm just going to bring this to the front. So it has to sit in front of the gradient. So a quick shortcut to do that is shift command and the right bracket, or that'll be shift control and the right bracket on a PC. And I need to make sure that this is a compound path. So to do that, I need to go to object, compound path, make, and that's going to be treating this as a single object. Now I can click and drag over both, right click, and then make clipping mask. So you can see this is quite a cool effect. Like I was saying, it's probably a little bit too light on the left hand side. I can always double click into this and change the color to see if that helps with a blue. So that works fairly well, I think. Now the last example we're going to look at here is applying this to a gradient that's been applied to a stroke. So we've selected the option to apply it across the stroke and it's a simple white to black to white gradient. Again, we'll go up to effect. I'm just going to try and apply the settings we had last time. And yeah, this is doing quite a nice job as well. And we're left with this really cool looking effect. I think this is probably my favorite application of this effect. And it doesn't just have to be simple shapes. We could apply this to more complex paths as well. This one I like particularly because we can apply the gradient along the path as well. And there you have it. So there you have the very simple technique to create some halftone gradients in Illustrator. If you have any questions at all, do let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, remember to hit the like button. If you haven't already, subscribe for more weekly content. And if you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.